Chandra hates waiting. She hates everything about this. The safe house, they're all cooped inside. The daily check-ins from other walkers waiting to hear the worst. The excruciating agony of knowing a blow is coming, but not knowing when or where. For the past week, they haven't been living in any real sense of the world. Word. <laughs> They've been waiting. That's the plan, after all. For two weeks, they'll wait here in one of Liliana's cabins on Dominaria. Though she swore these were simple placeholders for the soon-to-be reconstructed Fast Manor, they were crawling with the sort of wizards that would make a demon think twice. Chandra had no idea Liliana even knew so many wards. When pressed, Liliana simply said she'd learned to protect her investments. Well, it's actually from Strixhaven. At the end of these two weeks, if they've not gotten word, then they're to assume everyone's dead and proceed accordingly. If they get news before then, well, they'll act according to the news. If it's good, they'll spread the word to the others that there's nothing to worry about. And if it isn't, they'll tell the others to get ready for war. Some take the waiting better than others, better than she does. Vivian's out more often than she's in, which gives everyone a little breathing room. Her cooking's incredible too. Rand's also usually out, not never too far away, but never too far away. Waiting is fine for her, so she claims, but Chandra knows she's getting listless. Ren might be a dryad, but there's a fire within her too, and fire's always hungry for more. And then there's Liliana, who hates waiting as much as Chandra does. They don't really talk about it, because talking about it is like tearing open a wound, but it's something they've sensed about each other. When Chandra returns in the afternoons after her talks with Ren, Liliana's often got a story ready for her, something it's quite Sometimes it's quiet company, she'll sit there reading some ancient tome or reviewing plans for the renovation while Chandra waits. How can she even focus on something like that right now? Everyone's trying to be normal, but nothing is normal and no one wants to talk about it. She never asks if there's news and if someone arrives asking to hear some, it's usually Liliana who answers, sparing Chandra the trouble. But every day it feels worse. It's like there's a knife against her skin and every day someone drags it a little further along. Every drop of blood is a thing she hasn't spoken out loud. A thought she's too afraid to think. Correction weaponry, black oil, Ajani, Tamio, lost to them forever. So different from the people they'd been only a few months ago. A plane full of people like that. People who do that to others. Maybe it's wrong to think of them as people at all. She wants to strike back, at least if she was in the thick of it, she'd know what was going on, even if the answers weren't good. Lately none of the answers have been good. If Nissa was, more than anything she wants to be the waiting to be over. For now, she'll pass the time with Ren. You have to focus on your breathing, fire needs air just like we do, Chandra says. Jaya used to tell her that to calm her down when things got bad. If she could control her breathing, then she could control her fire. And if she controlled her fire, everything would be alright. Jaya's dead. Ajani killed her. And Chandra's not sure if anything is going to be alright again. But she has to hope that it will be. Ren's not great at breathing. <laughs> she's a tree, I guess. Chandra doesn't hold it against her. She's a dryad, after all. Most of them don't have lungs. Comparisons to human breathing are a little hard to grasp, Ren says. Flames lick up between her barky skin. In spite of the pain she must be in, she sounds cheerful. Right, Chandra says. She scratches at the back of her head. Nissa spoke three. She probably had tons of dried friends even. She'd know what to say, but she isn't here. Think of it like the fire's something you have to shape. You've got to find the parts of it that aren't helpful and cut them off. Better, Ren says. The fire does flicker, but it doesn't retreat as much as Chandra wanted. She sets a hand on Ren's shoulder, feeling like it's the thing a mentor should do, but without much of an idea how to mentor. 
Jaya left her with so many lessons. Chandra's not sure if she's internalized all of them. How can she pass all of that on to Ren? Somebody else would be better at this. Someone older. Someone like a Jani. Chandra extinguishes the thought. Extinguishes like a fire. That's beautiful. Let's do it together, she says. I'll be right here with you. Some fires aren't worth the air. The trick is knowing which ones. All right, Ren says. Although that seems terribly rude to the fire. Chandra closes her eyes. She takes a breath. In the back of her mind, she can hear Jaya's steady voice telling her to focus on the feeling of the air through her nostrils. She repeats the words, clumsy and inelegant, as they come to her. You have to talk to the fire, find out what it wants to do. And then the brash war horn boom of Tyvar's arrival falls like an axe between them. That's just how he sounds when he planes walks in, I guess. The two of them look over toward the safe house in time to see two figures limp through the door. Chandra's breath stops in her throat. There are no more words between her and Ren. There's no need. Chandra makes for the safe house, shooting a flare into the murky grey sky and hoping it will be enough to catch Vivian's attention. And for all that she hates waiting, Chandra finds herself hesitating at the threshold. Only three of them came back. Maybe the first three, maybe not. But which three would they be? She runs through the possibilities in her head and she hates herself for doing it. News is good to have, whatever it might be. But who waited beyond the door? She's never going to find out if she stays here. Chandra <laughs> takes a deep breath. She steps into the house with her eyes closed. We were right about the tree. They have their own. It's corrupted. Twisted. They outplanned us, had an answer for everything, shaping reality to whatever they want. Three voices, none Nissas. Another cut. Chandra swallows. There's other stuff to think about. This plan's bigger than any of them as individuals. Kaido, mostly whole, leans against the bust. Kaya and Taivar are slumped on a couch when she opens her eyes. Both covered in blood and dirt and grease. Liliana, of all people, is attending to the injured. She was a healer before. There are small vials of liquid laid out before her on the floor. She pours some onto a cloth before dabbing it against one of Tyvar's wounds. It's Lil Liliana who notices Chandra walking in. It isn't good news. Didn't feel like it was, Chandra says. Never seen anything fouler, Tyvar says. A, haunt a haunted look comes over him. The world tree. Essence they stole from Galdheim. They used it to make a monstrosity. It isn't even alive. They're using it to invade the other planes. Gaia can't sta stand sitting anymore. <laughs> She's up and pacing. Moving whole armies. Weapons like we've never seen before. There's almost no one left on New Phyrexia. But those nightmare machines... Soon they're going to be everywhere. But we still got people to fight back, don't we? We can get everyone else from the other planes. Round them up. Crash back to New Phyrexia and take Norn down. Chandra's babbling and she knows it. But she can't stop. Air, she thinks. Air, just keep breathing. All of this is worth the air. This isn't over. It can't be. There's sympathy in Kaya's eyes. No, we can't. Maybe we should wait for Vivian before we go into it. Kaido cuts in. Chandra doesn't like that at all. We've done enough of that. How are they controlling it? I'm just saying. Kaya starts as gentle as she can be. Kaya, please, Chandra says. It surprises her how pained she sounds. Tell me what happened. Kaya swallows. They got Nissa. And just like that, Chandra forgets how to breathe. She sputters. She knew, on some level, she knew... When Nissa wasn't with the group, that before she can summon something to say, the door opens behind them. There's news, Vivian says from behind them. Wait, where's Jace? Fashionably late, I imagine, Liliana says. She ties off the bandage around Taiva's chest. He'll be here any moment now. <laughs> Kaya closes her eyes. No, he won't. Liliana's face, at least, shows no signs of distress. Her voice comes sharp and hurt. The same hurt in Chandra's chest. Don't 
be ridiculous. He fought valiantly. But these beasts, says Tyvar, bravery doesn't matter much when your opponent never tires, never errs, Kaido says. He can't seem to look up from the floor. Or when you're that far gone. That doesn't make any sense, Liliana says. Well, Liliana, he fell for another girl. <laughs> Liliana stands, picking up a tray of files to hide her trembling hands. All of this nonsense was his idea. He wouldn't just fall. He doesn't do that. At the end, I don't think it was him anymore. He became one of them, Kaido says. Liliana's taking deeper breaths, but she doesn't want anyone to notice. What do you mean? We don't have time to get caught up in the details, Vivian interjects. Whatever happened, Nahiri's going to Zendikar. The Wanderer must have gotten away. Elspeth must have gone already, to Pharaohs. We saw the directions take Nahiri too, Tyver says. Elspeth didn't make it, Kaido adds. The Wanderer's probably headed back home, but there's no way Elspeth made it out of that. There's no way Elspeth Terrell died on New Phyrexia, says Vivian. Gaia's brows knit together, her eyes flick over to Liliana. Let's just get it out of the way. The last time we saw Elspeth, her sword was jutting out of Chase's back. She pinches the bridge of her nose before continuing. That messed up tree was already connected to a dozen planes at least. If he sets off the Silex, we could have lost them all. The thing was ticking away to the end of the days, and there wasn't any time. So she, Gaia trails off, Tyvar picks it up again. Elspeth ran him through, picked up the Silex and planeswalked into the blind eternities. A noble sacrifice, she must be feasting with the Valkyries now. Oh shut up, hisses Liliana, the air in the safe room's gone cold. Chase and Nissa are both gone, Nehiri too, even Elspeth couldn't make it out in the end. Out of everyone they sent, only four returned, and of the four, only three are here. Everything they feared is coming true, the Phyrexian invasion is on the way. Vivian settles onto the floor with them, having lost her proud bearing in the face of the news. This is worse than I thought. That's the only reason we're here. You need to understand what we're up against, Kaya says. The whole multiverse has to understand. Now as I was saying, while well, you can keep going without me, it's a sudden interjection with an odd amount of force meant to detract from the wavering of its speaker. Liliana is already making for the door. I'm going to send word to Strixhaven. You should hear the story, starts Tyvar, but Liliana is already shaking her head. I've got a good enough idea of your kind of storytelling. Noble sacrifices never sit well with me. Because of Gideon. Chandra opens her hand, then closes it into a fist. What if there's a way we can help the others? Chandra's heard people say Liliana's all sharp edges and ambition. That's true. But it's also true that at certain angles, those give way. The tilt of Liliana's head now is anything but sharp. The ambition in her eyes has changed to a deep sympathy. You want to go back there yourself, don't you? All eyes fall on Chandra. She's keenly aware of the way they're looking at her. What they must be thinking. Of course she does. She's impulsive. Chandra can hear the lecture starting. And she's already tired of them. She's tired of sitting around for the world to end. Yeah. Yeah I do, she says. There must be some other way to take the world tree down. You're all acting like it's over. Kaya presses the heel of her palm against her eyes. She takes a breath. I can't let you go back. Let me? Chandra says. She takes a step toward her. You aren't letting me do anything. The plan is to let the others know what's going on, Vivian says. She's cooler, more collected. But there's no mistaking what she thinks of Chandra's idea. We can rally our forces, figure out some way to fight back. But we can't do that if we rush in headlong. There's plenty of you to go do that, Chandra argues. Plenty of all of us. But if we keep fighting back against what's already there, we aren't going to make any progress. We have to keep cut them off at the root or they're going to keep coming. The others exchange looks. At least they're thinking about it. Liliana, for all of her earlier protestation, hasn't left yet. She remains halfway between Chandra and the door. 
she understands, doesn't she? She must understand better than anyone here what this feels like. It's Gaia who speaks up next. Chandra, I understand where you're coming from. Truly, I do. But I can't begin. You can't begin to understand what happened in New Phyrexia. This isn't something you can just blow in and solve without planning. We planned for it and we barely made it out. I've been an assassin for years and I almost lost my head in there. Nehiri dealt with Eldrazi. We lost her too. If you go there, you aren't going to just die. You're going to have your flesh stripped off, your bones shaped into metal and your mind warped to their sick world for you. Next time we see you, you'll be telling us about the joys of being one with Phyrexia. Vivian's right, the best thing we can do is try to avoid losing anyone else. Once we're done here, you must return home to Kaladesh and tell people how to prepare. That's the best we can do for them. The answers coming out of Chandra's mouth before her mind's had the chance to stop it. Stop it. You're treating me like a kid. I'm not treating you like a kid. I'm trying to look out for you. This isn't like Ravnica. The Eternals are nothing compared to Norn's fleshless legions. I know this is coming from a good place. You want to help everyone. You want to save the multiverse. Fine. But there are better ways to do that than running off half-cocked into a job a whole team of us couldn't finish. Kaya is saying things, but all Chandra can hear is more of the same. Kaya doesn't see the point. Tyvor has to understand, right? He loves big challenges, but when she catches his eye, he averts his gaze. Valor's commendable, echoes Tyvor, but so is knowing wh which battles are yours to fight. Kaya and I are only here to tell you what's happened. Go where you're needed, tend to your own, and die where your bones are home. This is everyone's battle, Chandra says, which means everyone gets a say in it, says Sivian. And my say is that we don't waste any more resources on something we know isn't going to work. I know how you're feeling. Admitting you've lost isn't easy, Kaido says. But we only lost the fight. If we can keep our home safe, we win the war. Chandra takes a breath. She feels like she's going to explode. This is the most obvious thing in the world and they can't, they either can't or won't see it. What about the people stuck on New Phyrexia? Are we just going to leave them there? No one wants to answer it, not directly. The silence that comes over the safe house then is nothing but another form of waiting. And Chandra hates it as much as she hates this whole situation. If she could burn everything down right now, if she could find a new start in the flames, then she would. Standing there is making her soul itch. Tell me, are we abandoning them? Breathing is getting harder to do, or easier. The breaths are big and sharp now, feeding the fire growing in the pit of her stomach. Heat sears the corners of her eyes. Chandra, Liliana says, soft as shadow on snow. She'd want you to stay safe, wouldn't she? Why would she have to say that? Chandra had been trying so hard not to think about it, trying to keep her imagination at bay, but Liliana's cut it loose. It's as easy to imagine Nissa here as it is to call fire. Chandra can see it so clearly, the determination written on Nissa's face, her eyes gone canopy green, the angle of her ears. She can feel Nissa's hand on her shoulder. She can smell moss and pine. She can hear the words even if she doesn't want to imagine them. It hurts. Gods, it hurts. She feels like she's bleeding out in front of everyone. And not a one is offering her any help at all. Chandra takes another breath. Air, she thinks. Just keep breathing. When we lose someone, we have to do honor to their memory, Liliana says. I haven't lost her, Chandra fires back. Kaya's exasperation increases by the second. She's exhausted and it's in every line of her face. She's gone, Chandra. No, she isn't. If we stop the fractions, then we can figure out how to stop. How to stop however this happened. How to make it better. You can't give up on... This is about more than any one person, Vivian cuts in. We're tending to a forest here, not a single tree. Don't you think I know that, she says, 
The faint glow at the edge of her vision tells her she's flaring up. She didn't intend to, but it's fine. Maybe even good. All this feeling has got to go somewhere. Don't you think I know how many lives are there on the line? That's why I want to go back. We're never going to win if all we do is run away. Chandra starts Kaya, but it's too late. She's beyond listening now. I'm listening. I'm leaving. <laughs> She says, you can go warn the other planes if you want to, but I'm not leaving our friends behind. You're going alone? Tyver asks. Since none of you are coming, yeah, I'm going alone. She says, backing toward the door. But I won't be alone when I get there. And what's your plan exactly? Kylo calls. Chandra doesn't turn. Take down the tree. Figure everything else out along the way. Nice and easy. The marsh awaits with Liliana as the last of the group standing in their way. Still, Liliana isn't quite blocking her, only leaning against the threshold, watching. You're serious about this, she says. Yeah, and you're serious about running away, aren't you? There are plenty of people who would kill for the chance to make Liliana Vess wins. Strangely, it doesn't feel like a victory to Chandra. None of this does. And that's the worst part. Is that what you think I'm doing? I'm not running. I just know funeral bells when I hear them. I wish you all the best on your little adventure. Wait, Chano says. But Liliana doesn't. She walks out into the marsh herself, hardly casting a backward glance. Oh, there's no time for waiting. You said so yourself. Nothing about today is easy. Chandra opens and closes her hand again. She wants to argue or make it clear that she really meant that Liliana would be a huge help if she came, and maybe they could find some answers together. And maybe it's good to face your fears instead of running from them. But that would be asking Liliana to be someone other than herself. And the two of them had always understood not to ask that of each other. Liliana disappears in the blink of inky vapor. Chana Nalar gets to walking. The tears are hot when they leave her eyes, but the cold air of the marsh threatens to freeze them against her skin. She turns up the heat to keep from shivering. She doesn't know how far she wants to go before she planes walks away. Really, she doesn't have to go far at all. She could do it here if she wanted to, but she wants to walk for a while, feel the wind, smell the uh, awful marsh smell, look up at the dull gray sky when she leaves. She may not see sky again for some time. It isn't the vibrant azure of Kaladesh. The clouds here don't spiral. In fact, there aren't any clouds at all. Only a morass of grey in all directions. She can't smell ozone or stall food. She can't hear the din of the markets. This place is not home. This place is not what she will remember. That's fine. She'll come back. There will be other places. She'll make sure of it. Because when the world tree comes down, they're going to have so many other places to go. It will be fine. After. She stops at the first tree she sees. It isn't a very strong one, or even very healthy. Its bark has gone black. Its branches empty and gnarled, like claws raking against the sky. But it is a tree. And she thinks that it's probably good enough for taking a breath. Chandra sits beneath its non-existent shade and throws her head back. Going to New Phyrexia is the right thing to do, but she is afraid. It will be fine. She just needs a second to build up to it. And maybe a second to cry before she planeswalks right into the mouth of an evil empire defended by the people who were once her closest friends. People she depended on to take that empire down. She... They couldn't do it. And now, she's going off to do it alone. A sudden coolness and the shifting of leaves tell her that she's not alone. Sniffling, Chandra frowns. Go away. Oh, I'd rather not. Then I'd have to return to the others. Ah, it's Ren. At least it isn't Kaya coming to try and talk her out of this. Still, Chandra can't think of anything to say. She tries not to sob as much now that she's got company, but she sobs all the same. I want to help. Chandra wipes at the tip of her nose. You do? I do. How strange it was to watch you speak with the others. I thought you were making perfect sense. If a branch has gotten rotten, you've got to cut it off before you can assess how the tree's doing. 
she didn't know what a relief it would be to have someone understand her. Before, it felt like her anger was steaming out of her, but it's different now, like it's melting out into the ground. Still, she has to be sure Ren means what she's saying. We won't have any backup. Don't speak so surely, Ren says. We have seven with us, and I think we'll have Teferi too. Teferi? But nobody knew where he was, or if he was even still alive. You're confused about that, aren't you? I think that's confusion on your face. It can be hard to tell sometimes what people are thinking just with their faces. You guessed right, Chandra says. You should give yourself more credit. If we had the fairy with us, you think you know where to find him? I think so, Ren says. She nods, while Seven assumes a thinking posture. <laughs> He's gotten himself caught in the tango again, but it's nothing we can't solve. I've been studying it while we've been in this place. The twisting paths have he's gone down. I know how to reach him, but I won't be able to do it on my own. Well, you won't be on your own, Chandra says. The fear's leaving too, as hope begins to rear its head. If she can get the fairy out from wherever he is, their odds improve considerably. You'll have me, Seven, and whoever else we find over there. But Ren looks away, her hand resting on Seven's bark. Seven has done so much for me. But he cannot do this. He cannot lend me the power he doesn't have. It must be the fire. And it must be the world tree. <gasps> Yo! Whoa! Ren is going into the world tree. The most important thing about dealing with fire, Jaya had always said, is knowing that it's dealing with you. You can guide it. You can make suggestions. You can give it a safe place to be. But in the end, it's always going to do what it wants. And what it wants changes from second to second. You have to be in conversation with it if you mean to get anywhere. And if you want to keep your friends safe, it's the exact opposite of dealing with trees. Chandra used to talk with Nissa about it too. Nissa used to tell her that sometimes turbulent, turbulent growth, the sort that happened all at once, could be like fire. At first Chandra hadn't believed her. Fire scours, nature nurtures. But then she saw what the royal was like on Zendikar and it started to make sense. Sometimes it was the same. She liked it when nature surprised her. And more than anything, she liked listening to Nissa talk about it. She tried to help Ren figure things out the way Nissa had helped her. But teaching is a lot harder than listening. And Ren's fire isn't any normal fire. That she's starting there at all is a, is a testament to her strength. If she's really, go really going to set it loose, then the world tree just might be the only thing that can handle it. You're sure? I am, she says. The others were wrong. That tree is alive. I can hear his song. Oh, is oh going to take the actual direction, world tree. I can hear his song from here. It's distant, but paint. A howl without melody. He needs help, just as the fairy and the others do. If I were to ignore it, what sort of hero would I be? My own fright has little to do with it, but doesn't it work the same as with uh, the, the failed planeswalker? When he took a beast, he got completed too, so won't it be the same with Ren? But okay. Chandra offers a small, sad smile. Hero, huh? I'm frightened too, but less, now that I've got company. You should find yourself a friend like Seven. Ren says, you'd never be lonely then. Unless that friend should happen to be lost on a plane full of vicious enemies. And then, she'd be very lonely indeed. Chandra's smile only gets sadder, but she stretches it out. As if to hide it. She gives Seven a pat on the back. Bark. <laughs> Not on the back. Bark. Let's head out. Ren tilts her head, as if realizing she might have said something amiss. But the moment passes without comment. Soon they have left the shade of the barren tree. No one comes to see them off. Not anyone they can see, at any rate. Oh dear. But there is someone watching the clearing. Yeah, yeah. There is someone watching the safe house. And the people within it huddled, huddled together in search of purpose and direction. A trick of the light might reveal them. Or it might not. A keen nose might notice their scent. Or it might not. Mm, scent. But they are there, watching. All of this feels familiar to them. Like a song whose lyrics have long since faded away. 
over and over, they try and remember, and yet the words flit away. Song? Only the melody remains, a lament for what is to come, a dolorous anthem, who's with the music? The Watcher, the Watcher, is not alone, there are others too, seeing and yet unseen. The Watcher asks one of them, what is it we're seeing? Why are we here? The answer comes like a trumpet of war horns. We are here to witness the beginning of the end. Ooh.